Welcome to Judgment Time, the show where we see if characters are redeemable. With Tears of the Kingdom on the horizon, I thought I would take a look at a Breath of the Wild villain, the notorious Master Koga of the Yiga clan. While the game plays him off for laughs, there are some serious consequences implied about his actions, and so I've decided to analyze him more in depth. So kick back and relax as I take a deep dive into the Yiga Master. I think you'll be surprised by what is revealed. I'm Cornelius Belmont, and this is Judgment Time. Thanks for watching the video. If you like my content, please like and subscribe to the channel. I've recently started a Patreon. More on that at the end. A special thanks to these people for letting me use their assets. Spoilers ahead for the following games. Let's get into it. It is difficult to talk about Koga's past without first talking about the nature of the Yiga clan. And so here's a brief overview. During the time of the Ancient Calamity talked about in the history of Breath of the Wild, the Sheikah created great weapons and technology, the likes of which the world had never seen before. This was the fight against the Calamity, an entity destined to appear and cause destruction throughout the land. Once that threat was dealt with, the King of Hyrule ordered the technology to be disbanded and buried, as well as the Sheikah to live out a traditional life without the use of their technology. Most complied, but some Sheikah did not, and so they felt resentment towards the royal family for how they were being treated, for it was their technology that won the battle, and now they were being told to stand down. It was these ancient Sheikah that splintered off and became their own clan, the Yiga. It is worth noting that the Sheikah fundamentally served the goddess Hylia, which ultimately means they served the royal family unquestioningly as it is the royal family who has the princess, who is always the incarnation of that goddess. As such, when the Yiga were formed, they instead dedicated themselves to the Calamity itself, knowing that one day it would return. It is unclear if they know the truth about Ganondorf, or even about the ancient demon lord Demise, but all the same, the Yiga serve as a counterpoint to the Sheikah. So the question that we need to ask when dealing with Koga is, where does he fall in all of this in terms of duty and goals? Well, during the present of Breath of the Wild, he is the leader of the Yiga clan. And that is a time in which the Calamity has won, the kingdom is in ruins, and the hero seems to be dead. And so with the Calamity victorious, the question becomes, what happens to the clan when they lose their purpose? Koga is less than ideal. He is overweight, old, and seems to lack any real direction or purpose. With that said, we have to question exactly how many bad things Koga has done. Clearly, we can't answer that. The game spends very little time on him, and the Yiga themselves serve little more than random encounters, than anything actually significant in the game. In fact, many conversations with those disguised Yiga members imply that he doesn't do much of anything outside of eating mighty bananas, taking naps, and have members engage in vague games or rituals. Koga himself seems ill-fit for the position, and so it seems possible he may have just inherited the position from whoever. Perhaps he earned it from being a great warrior back in the day. He sure shows a great many skills when the hero battles him but he is clearly out of practice and in poor physical condition. He is also, and I'm trying to be polite here, a complete idiot. Besides that, we know very little about his past. That is, without touching on Age of Calamity. It needs to be stated first and foremost that Hyrule Warriors is not canon. While I once argued in favor of it being so, that was before the DLC came along and invalidated its own timeline. And so, I've had to throw it out. However, there are things in Hyrule Warriors that are worth looking at since Koga is in it. Koga appears in that title a hundred years before the present, 
and he appears virtually as the same person. But there are no changes. He is still overweight, loud, idiotic, and a complete embarrassment for the Yiga. This is of course unusual because the Yiga are made up of Shika, which is to say the Shika species, not the Shika clan. And as we see with other Shika who age, they tend to get smaller. As such, it would stand that Koka after a hundred years would also become smaller. And so for Koka to exist a hundred years later in the exact same state doesn't actually make sense. Leading up to the release of Hyrule Warriors, this spun into some great theories about him, my favorite of which being that he was a time traveler sent back to groom his past self, something that would have been a complete stroke of brilliance had they written it. Alas, they dropped the ball, and it would seem that Koga in the game just never aged over the hundred years. Perhaps it was a boon from the calamity or some other unstated thing. For this reason, I am going to be issuing two judgments today. One on Hyrule Warriors Koga, and one on Breath of the Wild Koga. Let's see how that works out. We can see in Breath of the Wild that the Yiga clan causes lots of problems. It is implied that they actively cause trouble for the Gerudo as well as the Shika themselves. And of course, when they learn of the hero's awakening, they actively try to murder him. All of these things fall on Koga's head, as he is the leader of the clan and presumably giving the orders. Besides that though, there is little conflict that we see them cause because Hyrule is in pieces. If Koga was alive and active in the past, as we see in Hyrule Warriors, suddenly the number of sins he has committed rises to insurmountable levels. His army of Yiga warriors would have played a major part in the conflict leading up to the Calamity and Hyrule's ability to defend against it. Age of Calamity shows that the Yiga attempted to assassinate Princess Ella whenever they could, as does the memory shown in Breath of the Wild. In addition, the clan actively helps Aster with his plot to resurrect the Calamity, and they also actively hinder Hyrule's defense at Akala Citadel. By virtue of there being a conflict for Koga to be active in, he gains more sin. There is also one more thing that cannot be overlooked. The very real possibility that Zelda's mother, the Queen of Hyrule herself, was murdered by the Yiga. In both Breath of the Wild and Age of Calamity, we see Zelda herself targeted by the clan, and for good reason. Both of the diaries of Princess Zelda and the King in Breath of the Wild reveal that the Queen died before she could pass on the training needed for the Princess. And so, a very real possibility exists that she was assassinated to achieve just that, to leave the princess unable to use her power when the time was needed. While it is not stated that they actually assassinated the queen, it seems very likely that assassination is something that was on the table. And so, at a minimum, we can account attempted assassination as part of Koga's sins. Toward the end of Age of Calamity, Aster becomes more desperate and turns on the Yiga clan. He kills many of them stealing their essence, and uses that to resurrect the Blight Ganons, all for a big showdown with the hero and the princess. This in turn causes Koga and Suga to run for their lives. Eventually Suga would sacrifice himself to protect his master, repaying Koga for taking care of him all of these years. Koga would then submit to Princess Zelda, and offer what is left of the Yiga clan to battle against the Calamity. Turning coat when you are beaten and begging for your life does not excuse a lifetime of bad deeds. The Yiga is responsible for many of the bad things we see in Age of Calamity, and all of those things fall on Master Koga. And so while the princess does welcome his troops into her command, it is merely because they are needed for the coming battle, and thus that does not cleanse any sin from his past. I actually like to pretend that post Age of Calamity, that Queen Zelda had them all executed, but I digress. Still, at least Koga attempted to help the right side even if it was only to save his life, 
The Koga in Breath of the Wild, on the other hand, well, he resisted the hero and presumably died falling down a hole due to his own stupidity. In both cases, Age of Calamity and Breath of the Wild, very little is actually done to balance the scale towards redemption. I don't think many of you will be surprised with this outcome. The Koga of Age of Calamity commits many sins on camera, more off camera, and the question could be raised of exactly how long he has been disrupting the kingdom, since he doesn't show any signs of aging. He could have been doing this for much longer than a hundred years. The one that we see in Breath of the Wild, however, would likely have been alive less than a hundred years if we compare him to the stature of other elderly Sheikah. And so, the Breath of the Wild version is free of those past sins. That being said, even the Koga of the present is actively trying to aid the Calamity by sending his agents to kill the newly returned hero. In other words, he is actively trying to stamp out hope of the kingdom's return. And that cannot be overlooked. Indeed, the Age of Calamity Koga has a lot more sin on his plate, and neither of them actually show remorse for any of the actions they have taken. As such, I declare Giga Master Koga, both from Age of Calamity and Breath of the Wild, as irredeemable. Thank you for watching. Well, with that out of the way, what did you think of my judgment? Is Master Koga really that terrible? Do you even think I should be considering Age of Calamity in this? Let me know your opinion in the comments below. I'd like to remind you that this show is being supported by Patreon now. And as such, I would like to give a special shout out to my first patron, my first champion, Kami. Thank you very much. If you would like to join up and be part of the topic selection for the channel, or want to join me in discussions on the Discord server, then head on over and sign up, but only if you're in a position to help. Take care of yourself first. Well, this has been Cornelius Belmont, and may the way of the hero lead to the Triforce.